is Colin Muccio. I am the Development Director of the Wildlife Rescue and Conservation Association here in Guatemala. Um, uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about marine protected areas in the Pacific coast of Guatemala. I first became involved with Arcus and uh, specifically in the Pacific coast of uh, Guatemala because I saw that nothing was being done. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis put on other countries and other areas of Guatemala, uh, but the Pacific coast of Guatemala has been abandoned and uh, neglected for years in terms of uh, conservation efforts. So today I'm going to be talking to you about marine protected areas on the Pacific coast of Guatemala. First, just a brief um, uh, overview of ARCUS. Uh, ARCUS is a Guatemalan NGO created in 1989. It's uh, uh, focusing on wildlife trafficking. That's an example right there, that photograph. It's a, a baby uh, howler monkey being fed at our main rescue center. We uh, originally started um, with uh, by by building a rescue center in the Mayan Biosphere Reserve, which is in the north of the country, uh, focusing on wildlife trafficking sites. But over the years, we've gone to uh, emphasize more and more protected areas, because what's the point of rescuing wildlife if there's no habitat into which release them? So our objectives are rescue, re rehabilitate, and release wildlife, combat illegal wildlife trafficking, promote education and sustainable community development, and contribute to the management of natural resources and protected areas. We work in three areas of Guatemala, the Northern Paten region, the Maya Biosphere Reserve, uh, also in the uh, central region uh, and near uh, Guatemala, the, the highlands. And uh, the focus of this uh, presentation was going to be our work on the Pacific coast, uh, specifically in the area of Hawaii, no relation to the island. Just a quick, quick uh, overview. In Paten, we uh, have a, one of the largest uh, wildlife rescue centers in the world. We receive between 300 and 600 wild animals per year of 40 different species, most of them the result of confiscations uh, from traffickers. There's our quarantine area, and on the right there are some chicks and macaw chicks. Uh, some of the animals we receive, scarlet macaws, a uh, big species, uh, everybody's favorite, the jaguar, uh, brocket deer, here we have the, um, the yellow lord or red-fronted Amazon, spider monkey, howler monkey, a uh, margay, and the endemic species is the Moraledi crocodile. Uh, we rely a lot on the help of volunteers. Here we have a, a volunteer from uh, Norway uh, feeding a spider monkey. We also work a lot with uh, jaguars. This jaguar was hit by a car uh, and died at a rescue center. Uh, the main threats to uh, jaguars are poaching for the illegal pet trade, hunting, loss of habitat and encroachment by the uh, agricultural and the touristic frontier. Here is a jaguar that we were tagging. Um, we dart them and um, bring them down and put uh, satellite uh, collars on them. We also focus, as I said, a lot on scarlet macaws. Uh, the threat there, again, is poaching, loss of habitat, wildfires, uh, but they also suffer from natural predation or nest competition. Um, here, uh, a uh, scarlet macaw chick was attacked by a hawk that invaded its nest. Uh, so the scarlet macaws are very endangered, locally endangered, uh, with uh, under 500 uh, individuals remaining in mainly in the Paten, the Maya Biosphere Reserve. Here's a macaw release that we carried out. You can see the sat of the antenna of the uh, satellite transmitter. And this is a spider monkey release on, in uh, the Kante Island in the Mayan ruins of Yaksha. But the main focus today is uh, our work on the Pacific coast. So we're going to uh, cross the country to the area of Hawaii. This is uh, the, in Hawaii, the main focus on sea, is on sea turtle, caiman, and iguana conservation or research mangrove conservation, sustainable community development, environmental education, and protected areas management. 
One of the big species in the area is the leatherback. Unfortunately, there are less than a thousand individuals remaining in the Eastern Pacific, and um, they're almost certainly heading towards extinction. Um, and the, the small picture in the top right is an example of what's done uh, with the eggs. The eggs are harvested and taken to local markets where they're uh, sold as aphrodisiacs, which is obviously not a priority in Guatemala with a 2.4% population growth rate. This is the uh, most prominent species on the Pacific coast. It's the olive ridley sea turtle, a smaller sea turtle, very abundant. Um, they're, they're at, the population is, is actually fairly healthy, so the government allows harvesting of these nests as long as local egg uh, gatherers uh, donate 20% uh, of each nest. So the work in the area is, has a lot to do with sustainable use. Uh, people are allowed to harvest sea turtle eggs, mangrove wood, and they're allowed to fish uh, and other activities as long as it's done in a sustainable fashion. This is the main focus of my presentation. Uh, we uh, managed to have the Hawaii protected area declared. Uh, it consists of over 4,000 hectares of mangrove, dry forest, and coastal habitat with uh, the, the most important sea turtle nesting beaches and mangrove um, uh, wetlands in Guatemala. But we're also working with other protected areas. This was a UNDP project that we uh, uh, collaborated on to set up five protected areas along the Pacific coast. Um, so in addition to the Hawaii area, which is the smallest circle there, um, we'd like to see um, five protected areas um, um, created or uh, 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 strengthened. And we also want to see these protected areas extended into the ocean. And we're working on that right now. We also have a small private reserve, only 25 hectares of tropical, dry tropical and mangrove forest. It's a small uh, area in the middle of the bigger Hawaii protected area. But it's a very important area because it's, uh, it's got a lot of uh, biodiversity there. So our work in the area of Hawaii is uh, very much focused on mangrove conservation and research, uh, sea turtle conservation, uh, biodiversity. Um, but in a country like Guatemala, you have to, um, with, with such inequity and poverty, you have to work closely with uh, the local people. So we do a lot of community projects as well. We have a separate project called Colores, which is focused on the, the conservation of the yellow-naped Amazon parrot. There's only about 500 of these parrots left. They're a big target of the illegal pet trade because they can speak very well. So everybody wants one in their kitchen talking to them. So finishing up, uh, we also work in Guatemala City, uh, where we do a lot of education and um, policy reform. Um, there's a, a girl participating in one of our education activities. Our Guatemala City uh, office also serves as a, as a holding area for animals, uh, recent, recently confiscated animals. And we are also working on the Cerro Luz area, which is uh, a 5,000 hectare protected area on the outsides, uh, outskirts of Guatemala City. It uh, consists of um, uh, tropical montane forests uh, with a lot of epiphytes and uh, orchids, as well as those endemic uh, uh, lizards uh, called um, 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 abronia. So our vision for the future is to protect the wildlife ecosystems and biodiversity of Guatemala by guaranteeing the sustainable use of natural resources, rescuing and conserving wildlife, and carrying out education, research, and sustainable community development. In terms of metrics, these are uh, them. We're focused mainly on uh, wildlife, but also community activities. And uh, at the end, you can see uh, also protected areas, uh, number of hectares reforested or under uh, or under protection. So as I said, we, um, as we've grown as an institution, uh, we've focused more and more on protected areas, and that's the way we want to keep uh, growing. This is a sampling of some of our donors.
this is our contact information. If you'd like to get in contact with them, with us, um, here's the information. Thanks very much.